Hello and good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending from which part of the world you are joining us from today. This is uh, Bora Filipovic calling from Margate, UK today. Um, I hope that you all hear me well, and uh, I want to thank you all first for joining us for our first in a series of webinars. Uh, today we'll be talking about aviation. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, a little bit of our uh, video, a little bit of an introduction prior to start, having an uh, aviation campaign video that we started uh, recently as well. Uh, as we go through this, just a, a short message for me that we'll be looking to make this as short as possible, try to keep it, let me say, moving, and we'll be making it interactive as much as, as possible. Um, as you will see on your skin, you will be able to ask a question. So by all means, you are invited to ask a question. But before you can ask us a question, uh, I will be, uh, let me say, starting to talk a little bit about Ingersoll Rand and Emco Wheaton that we are part of, uh, as well as Todo. But uh, we will be sending out a survey, and I'm asking a colleague to send out the survey to you all, because we would like to understand a little bit more about yourselves and to see um, you know, where are you coming from? What kind of industry are you in? And, you know, some of the, some of the other questions. There's about 90 seconds time to uh, answer this uh, question. Uh, I'll be talking over it, so don't worry about, you know, not seeing the screen. I've been talking about the introduction. So if we start on, I'm going to say that uh, we are now part of Ingersoll Rand, an international diversified uh, manufacturer that is serving a, a number of industries and verticals around the world. Um, as part of Ingersoll Rand, with more than 50 plus countries footprint, more than 16,000 employees, it is a publicly traded company, 40 plus brands and $12 billion market capitalization. So it's a, a, it's a quite long standing uh, company with experience in industrial technologies and serving aviation uh, already for a very, very long while. Uh, if we move on now to the next page, you will see a little bit about where I am calling from today, which is the Margate, the UK, uh, Emco Wheaton, and Todo, which is producing, manufacturing here and shipping uh, globally. It's a member of now Ingersoll Rand. And uh, this facility itself is here in the UK since the 50s, but really Emco Wheaton has over nine years of experience in fuel systems equipment. Um, there's military and commercial clients alike who trust them in total to provide the best solutions for aviation and for fuel transfer. Uh, we do have tried and tested technologies that we do want to, uh, let me say, promote and share with you part of it today. Uh, okay, so as we, uh, let me say, as we move on now to the product, I hope you had a chance to answer some of the questions that we have sent on to you. Um, and if we can pull back the survey now, please. I would like to move on now slowly to the products. Okay. Um, so let's start with the first one uh, is a, a long-standing product uh, that, that we are, let me say, shipping internationally. This is a G180 overwing nozzle. So what can I tell you about G180? Uh, from what you can see a little bit, it is uh, up to 80 U.S. gallons per minute flow rated, 110 PCI. But one of the key features that you can see there as well is a, a speed spout, is a quick change mechanism. It has an allosomeric ring that prevents nozzles from damaging the aircraft. It has a factory tested and traceable uh, uh, nozzle design that a flow and leak is tested for each and every piece here in UK and Margate. Um, it has a body and handle guard that's aluminum construction, anodized black. Um, it is a, having a, a metering ability, meaning it is a sensitive uh, trigger uh, in order to control the flow. It has bumper pads. And if you look at how it is used and what is it used for, you can say that in different configurations of the spouts, you can look at a couple of options. Um, one is, for example, one inch straight, which is usually used for avgas. 
and the fuel tanks on these airplanes are smaller and shallower, and therefore not as much flow is required. If the customer is handling Avgas, we also recommend to purchase a nozzle with a red handle guard, which gives further identification of the nozzle. One and a half inch straight uh, configuration is used for jet fuel traditionally, and uh, it was used prior to the introduction of the flare spout. There are still many aircraft that will not take the flare spout, and so this spout is used. One and a half inch flares is used exclusively for jet fuel. There is a standard specification for jet fuel aircraft, so the jet fuel will not be cross fueled into an Avgas fuel aircraft. Uh, some of the other things that I can mention here is the stainless steel lever hinge pin for corrosion resistance is a key ring added for easier repair. Lock nuts for securing standard spout in place. There's a grounding cable available and uh, I want to say handle is available as color coded red or black. I think if we move on, you will see that um, the G180 has a different set of spouts that I mentioned, but also the dust cap, grounding cable that's pictured here. And you see a little bit of an application photo there as well uh, on the aircraft refueler. Um, if you look at that, uh, I think one of the messages that we want to, you know, let me say send across is that there is a a uh, very high number of specifications we can provide back to, uh, to our customers. So depending on what your need is, if you get back to us, to our team in MCO Eaton here, I think we can help you with specifying exactly what, what, is, of your, what is of your need. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what we can say to that is that, you know, it is a standard fuel-resistant dust cap available with spot activated or hook and it's integrated inlet swivel with various connections available. So this is a little bit about G180. As I said, we're gonna fly through here just a little bit to keep it moving. Um, and as we move on, we get to a G457, which is a, a helicopter hot refueling nozzle that is a 10 to 90 US gallon per minute fueling flow rate. It has in per natto specification, this is widely accepted on all platforms, and we are really shipping both G180 and G457 really across all continents and most of the countries. Uh, it has a high-level auto shadow built-in equipped with an anti-foam device and a cold weather variant is available. I think what you can see a little bit is that the body of G180 and G457 is the same. They share the body, but the configuration of the ending nozzle is, is somewhat different. I think, uh, you know, it is really engineered G457 here to eliminate spills and to ensure that the fuel cannot be accidentally delivered into the engine intake during the hot refueling, so preventing any costly and time-consuming restarts of the engine. A key feature of the nozzle is the proximity switch that automatically stops the fuel if the nozzle is no longer aligned to the helicopter body. Uh, with an automatic shutoff, when the tank is full, the nozzle also features a manual override to let the fuel operator fill the tank to absolute maximum. The flow control mechanism can handle pressures up to 110 PSI, can operate to temperatures up to minus 30, and it can be even, even more. It is really developed for the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense to use in combat situations where acting really quickly on roof killing the helicopter sometimes can be a matter of life and death. And it is also accepted by US Forest Service and Federal Aviation Administration. Um, during refueling, the nozzle allows the fuel operator to refuel the helicopter while the engine is still running. And this is really key. And in addition to that, it removes the human error element, makes hot refueling more or less foolproof operation. So this is a little bit about G457 that we wanted to share with you today. Um, in addition to that, as we mentioned, TODO has a, another full range of uh, options that we have is a product line that serves industrial couplings for fluid, gas, and hazardous material handling. Within this specific, let me say, application, within aviation, uh, TODO 45 and TODO Matic product lines are the ones that really do apply the most. What you do see here is that obviously TOTO 45 is a dry brake coupling system, virtually zero spill, which is really important, up to 790 gallons per minute flow capacity. 
uh, up to 10 bar max working pressure. It is ISO 45 compliant, has a wide range of connection types available. So do get in touch with us if you do need any kind of a special application. What we want to mention is that this is mainly for aviation fuel transfer, total 45 being, strictly not for underwing refueling applications. So it's aluminum and stainless steel construction, range of dust caps are available, and there's no brass in construction. So normally, let me say anecdotally, a total 45 is normally used in some of the older refuelers and fuel transfer connections. Uh, and we have a wide range of them available. So if you're looking at some of the older application, older, uh, let me say, equipment on the Air Force around the world, I think we can supply most of those applications with Total 45. If you look at Totomatic itself in its own right, it is really, let me say, a, a market-leading dry brake coupling. One to 16-inch size is available, up to 25 bar max working pressure, and it is a NATO stain egg, 30 cents, 56 compliant. It does come in aluminum or stainless steel as well, and aviation application specific variants with no brass is available. It has a global install base, really, serving major aviation fuel clients. It is a common to use a two-inch automatic with aluminum construction. This is, let me say, the most commonly used. There is a numerous so ring grades to suit fuel type or environmental temperatures available. So uh, this is a little bit of the product that, let me say, that we wanted to mention. Um, as we move on with this, uh, like I say, I, I wanted to keep it really short and moving uh, for this first webinar. We'll be collecting some of your feedback. What I would like to ask uh, uh, my colleagues to send a, a second part of the survey just to see uh, what is your, let me say, position in the industry. What are you working on uh, currently so that we can collect some of that feedback, use it in our work, and come back to you to help you as and how you need it. Um, what I do wanted to mention as well here on the slide, you can see you can contact Edward Spetskun or Sam Blackmore with the contacts as they are on the screen for any further information if you need them. Um, and we do always want to mention that both military and commercial clients alike do trust them because we may have a wide range of, uh, let me say, applications, do get back in touch with us if, uh, you know, if you have any questions. Um, okay, so in order to wrap this up relatively, uh, let me say, interestingly, so to say, um, we do have a couple of questions, let me say, that we uh, wanted to answer. And let me, uh, let me choose the two that, that we can answer straight away here. And for the rest of them, we can get back to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis or you can get back to us. So, uh, yeah, we have two questions we can answer. First one is, uh, you mentioned lowest working temperature of G457. What is the lowest working temperature for G180? Okay, so the standard for G180 is minus 30, but we have actually supplied nozzles for special use on icebreakers in the Arctic, and they can go up to minus 50 uh, Celsius degrees. So it, it's a quite, let me say, wide range of temperature tolerance. So it can apply to Canada, can apply to Siberia, can apply to Arctic. So we can supply all the troublesome temperature areas, if you like. Um, okay, another question is, what is the thread type on the threaded spouts? Okay, so the thread type is a one and a half inch NPSM. So it's a not tapered, it's a parallel thread if that is any help in any practicality. Okay, so this is what we have for you today. I, I, uh, I hope this was kindly interesting. Uh, do get back in touch with us. Uh, please, uh, you know, we are happy to answer any questions. So I just got another one. Um, it says, with the merger, will there be a decrease in time to fulfill orders? I, we remain, let me say, reactive and quick uh, to supply any and all customers. Please get back in touch with us after this uh, webinar. If you are experiencing anything other than excellent support, we, I want to hear about it personally, and we'll make sure that your, uh, we'll make sure that your supply is, is secured. Okay, with that being said, thank you very much for attending the webinar. Uh, wish you all a very good day, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye now.